Then we have Rothko Chapel. Now, Mark Rothko is commissioned in 1964 and given the opportunity to shape and control a total environment to encompass his work, resulting in a group of 14 paintings created especially for the meditative space, which is the Rothko Chapel. Now, he works closely with the original architect, Philip Johnson, on the plans, and then with Houston architects, Howard Barnstone and Eugene Aubrey, who completed the building. And here we see an exterior view of the structure. As an institution, the Rothko Chapel functions as a chapel, as well as a museum and a forum. It's meant to be a place where religion, art, and architecture intermingle. Here we see people, uh, obviously, in the 1970s or so, looking around. Now, if you look at these paintings, you'll notice that they all seem to be violet, or some shade thereof. And that's because of the neutrality of violet as a color. You see, the Rothko Chapel is open to all denominations, all religions. It's really sort of a place where all spiritual beliefs can come together. So, he needs to create something very universal, which he feels Violet is. It's comforting, it draws us in, but then again, because there is no illusion, because we have divorced from any form of visual imagery, whether you're Buddhist, Christian, Jewish, Muslim, Jain, Sikh, uh, Baha'i, whatever it is, you look at this and you can see spiritual ideas and spiritual images from your own faith because it's drawing them out of your own subconscious and your own unconscious. He has, in effect, created the perfect universal art because it draws these ideas out of everyone. And remember I said people have emotional breakdowns. Well, sometimes it's about the setting. You're in a chapel. If you're in a chapel, you're probably thinking about religion, about faith, about possibly even salvation. When you're already in that mindset, it opens you up to start to see things, to start to see your deity or ideas from your faith coming out seemingly from the painting. But again, it's not coming out of the painting. It's coming out of your own unconscious. So he's created something particularly powerful and I would argue, particularly universal, because it's one thing to talk to people between cultures, but to create something that most religions can come together and accept, that, that is truly remarkable.